Hello! Welcome to today's video blog. Um, for today's video blog, I'm going to be doing my wrap-up for the month of September. Um, I had... I read three books in September. One was a DNF, and two I, um, finished and enjoyed. So, um, September was shaping up to be a better month than, um, the previous summer. Because this past summer, there was just pretty much a book kind of funk where, like, I just, I couldn't, there wasn't, like, really, I think maybe there was, like, one book that I, like, loved, loved, loved. And, um, so that's in my September, or my summer wrap-up, if you, uh, missed that. Um, so for my September wrap-up, uh, we're gonna start with the book that I DNF'd, which, sadly was a C.D. Rice book that, um, I don't know, she started off so strong for me with, like, the, the marriage duet with, um, marriage games and separation games, which I absolutely adored, and it's still my gold standard for her. Um, and then we had, um, Prince Charming, which I absolutely adored. But then, like, the, the last few that I've read of hers, like, Bombshell, Bodyguard, and this one, the, uh, submission... The second flat. Oh! Sorry. The submission series that I've been listening to, that I had been listening to on Audible, um, just did not, just did not grab me. And I know that a lot of people, because I've seen <laughs> on Goodreads, a lot of people love this series, her uh, submission series. I just, I could not warm up to um, Monica, the heroine. I just, she just felt very, very cold to me. Like, I just, I didn't, I just couldn't with, she just didn't grab me. And um, again, the, the sex scenes were, were hot, definitely that, but I just, she just felt very unlikable to me. And there was this subplot with, um, she, uh, Monica's an aspiring singer, or she's a singer, and, um, she is part of a, uh, little group with, um, another guy who's, like, an ex-boyfriend, I think, and a girl who's, um, a pianist who has a history of, uh, depression. And I, like, just the way that they describe, like, Monica, like, just describes her or like just the way that that they act like when they're not around her it's like they talk about like how much they care about her and how much they love her and all this stuff but at the same time they also talk about like how they act like her depression is like this huge inconvenience for them like um they talk about how, like, exhausting it is to, like, deal with somebody who, um, has depression and has committed suicide and how they have to, like, walk around eggshells around them and that kind of thing. And, um, there's this point where Monica is potentially going to get a record deal, but they only want her, like, a soloist. They don't want, um, the friend who, and Monica's all worried that, like, the friend is gonna um, freak out, and she doesn't know, like, how she's gonna handle, how the friend is gonna handle, like, being essentially rejected by the, the record company, because, um, if anything, it's actually the, the, the friend who wants, uh, more for them to, like, go for this thing of, like, trying to get a record deal and all this, and I don't know, like, just the way that Monica talks about it, it's, like, she pays, it's, to me, it feels like she pays lip service to, like, oh, I'm going to make sure that they want both of us because I don't want her to have another relapse. And, you know, like, it would be an inconvenience for Monica. And I don't... It's probably... To be fair, it's probably realistic to, like, have those emotions and have that those conflicting ideas of, like, 
dealing with somebody who um, has had depression and has had suicidal tendencies and all that. But I don't know if it was just like me, like in like my mood as like being personally someone who has in my 20s dealt with depression and all the, the horrific um, th thoughts and feelings that go along with living that day to day. Um, it just sort of like gave voice to every single little thing that a person with depression fears that other people think about them. You know, that that they're a burden, that uh, they're an inconvenience. They're, that's just what I felt from Monica, and it really bothered me. And it just made her really unlikable to me. I mean, it just, I'm not sure if I can explain it. It was, it was like everything she was, it, it was like she was trying to balance out the, and like, to make her a more likable her heroine, they would balance out like every negative thought she had with a positive thought. Like, oh, like, oh, we, we you know we have to do this because like Gabby won't be able to handle it and blah, blah, blah. But we really love her because she's our friend and blah, blah, blah. It just, it felt like the, but we really love her was sort of like pandering and like um, lip service. And it just felt like the inconvenient thoughts were her actual thoughts. And it just, it just bothered me and just, yeah. And, um, yeah, I just, it, it made Monica like a really unlikable heroine for me. Um, to be fair, I could be looking at it through the lens of somebody who had been through depression and just, I just didn't like having those feelings brought up of, is this what people actually thought about me when I was going through what I was going through? And it's just a horrible feeling. It's a horrible, horrible feeling to go through. Um, so yeah, I, I DNF'd uh, the submission series because yeah, the and also like the, the, the sex scenes were hot and everything, but I just didn't, I, I just didn't feel like <clears throat> a, a spark between, <clears throat> excuse me, Monica and um, Jonathan. I just, yeah, there was like a sexual spark, but I mean like a relationship sort of spark. <coughs> oh, my voice is all, uh, okay. So yeah, that one just, I DNF'd. Um, the next one that I loved was, uh, let me see if I can bring it up here. A Pretty Broken Girl by, let's see if I spell it, pronounce it right, G, Jenna, J-E-A-N-N, J-E-A-N-A, man, M-A-N-N, and it is a uh, reunited lover's story, it's a couple that um, had been divorced, and because um, she was a, I think a housekeeper's daughter, and he was the uh, son of the estate where they worked on. Um, and so, of course, they fell in love. And um, he turned his back on his family for her. And then uh, things were like really rough. And she has this brother who's this like delinquent who keeps ending up in, in hot water. And his, the uh, Sam, the hero's father, uses that against the heroine um, to get her to divorce Sam. Uh, the brother steals from the family and the father uh, uses that to get the heroine out of his son's life and absolutely destroys the son and uh, the father pays her like millions of dollars and promises that he won't have the brother arrested for uh, stealing. Um, so like 10 years later and of course the husband takes over her company and um, of course the, all the feelings come back and all this and, and it's, it's, I love like reunited lovers stories 
Um, and it was just, um, oh, I'm not sure if I can, I have to show you guys the cover. Um, and it, it apparently is a part of a series, but I don't know if I want to continue with the series or just leave it as the, the ones that I, um, that I read, that, that one that I read, get, get to my red. See the ones that I read. Oh, there we are. Okay. Come on, where are you? Okay. And because the, the, I love the way that it ended, and if it's a series, like, th of course, like, that ended with, like, them together, but it ended in such a way that it was more of a, like, okay, where I'm willing to try kind of thing. So that's Pretty Broken Girl by Jenna E. Mann. Um, yeah, Sam was like, at the end, we were like, okay, he said that he's willing to, to try and like, um, re, like, reunite with her and, and, and go with, like, uh, the relationship forward. Um, and there's more in the series, and the next one is something like Pretty Filthy Lies, which, okay. Um, I don't know if I want to read the rest of the series. Because I would have liked it better if they just showed them, like, extend the book a little, make it a little longer, and, and show, like, that, like, working back to being, like, where they are. Because I don't want the other series, the next book in the series, to be all of a sudden there's, like, more convoluted, like, drama coming up just to make, like, a whole, whole book. Like, you, like they ended in, like, a really good place. Don't make it don't like throw like more drama and like stuff at them just to like make a longer series. I would have liked to see like just them a little bit, make the book a little longer and like work too. So I don't know if I'm gonna get the, the other books in the series, I'm not sure. Um, the next one The next one that I got was, that I read and I liked, was uh, The Billionaire's Pet, which I think I'm gonna have to insert here because I don't think I have. The, the Billionaire's Pet by Ivy Lane. Um, I loved this one as well. This one was a lot of fun. Um, the only part that didn't, the only part that felt a little slow for me is um was about what the midway point when like the heroine gets sick and he and the hero is taking care of her now um billionaire's pet is um the hero and the heroine have sort of like been in each other's circle uh because she was married to this guy um uh who was um part of a family that I guess they were gangsters or like some kind of like the father-in-law was involved in some shady just not not uh, legit uh, stuff and uh, so she thought that the son that she married was like not a part of that world but turns out that he was and when the husband dies um, she is sort of used as a bargaining chip for the father-in-law um, to get more power and um, these, um, to make a deal with like these biker guys um, because the, the son like um, got, there was some sort of like um, deal or something gone bad and so she needs help. So she goes to the hero and um, is like, okay, um, I, I need, um, I 
need help. I need I need protection. I'm, I need like to pay off um, the sons, her dead husband's uh, debt to these guys. Otherwise, the father-in-law is going to use her to pay off the debt. Um, and so the hero who has there's been like sort of an attraction between them over the years, but neither have acted on it because she was married. Um, so the hero kind of uses this, the whole like, oh, um, I'll, I'll take care of your, I'll protect you and I'll take care of you like for a price kind of thing. And it's that whole like, I will let you do what you will to me. <laughs> um, as long as you protect me and, and I, I'm coming to you because I need your help and whatever you ask for, I will do. So he has, of course, always had these fantasies about her, about um, keeping her about, uh, he has this fetish about um, love slaves and like sex slaves and um, to, be in a relationship, or not, not not like a relationship, but in, in have an arrangement where he has a submissive that he keeps like at home and is only there to like serve his needs and that kind of stuff. So she's like, well, in her head, she's like, well, I've always been attracted to you, so this is not gonna be that much of a hardship. So, okay, I'm game. Um, so it's, it was, I really enjoyed it. Um, the only part, the only complaint really that I would have is there, there are a few scenes where, yeah, they're, they're in the BDSM sort of like dominant submissive, um, space and, and they, they act out those, those, um, scenes as it were. Um, and then sort of she gets sick. I think she gets like really sick. She gets like the really, really, really bad flu. And he's taking care of her. And um, of course, like all the pants feelings come up, like the heart feelings, I mean, because the pants feelings were always there. Um, and he sort of dismisses that whole arrangement part. Like he doesn't want the arrangement anymore. He wants the actual relationship with her, but he thinks that she won't because of the power dynamic of like, oh, she's only here because I'm protecting her and it's gratitude and blah, blah, blah. And she has the heart's feelings as well and is like, oh, but he doesn't want a relationship. He only wants the arrangement kind of thing. So it's it's that kind of thing. Like, use your words, PayPal. Um, but yeah, like, sort of after she gets sick, I thought that part kind of dragged a bit long. Um, and then they just sort of start working towards, like, the relationship part. And sort of like, dancing around each other of, like, wanting to explore the more romantic side and actually making a go of the relationship as opposed to just the, um... BDSM side. I would have liked to see more of the BDSM side, like, as they were doing, as they were having the pants feeling, the heart feelings. But, um, yeah. So that that's the my only complaint. But, um, I really liked it. Um, and I will be checking out more of Ivy Lane's books, because I really, really like that book. So, that is going to be it for this week. Um, I'm almost finished The Shadows by J.R. Ward. I'm almost done. And then um, the next book I hope to start is um, my sister got me a copy of Lone Star by Paulina Simons, which um, Paulina Simons is like the bronze horseman, you know, that whole series, like, is next to Outlander level of like my favorite series of all time. Um, and Lone Star is a standalone story. Uh, Paulina Simons only let me down once so far with A Song of the Daylight, which I hate that book with the power of a thousand suns. Um, 
So I'm looking forward to Lone Star. My sister loves it, <laughs> like loves it so, so much. So uh, it makes me encouraged that I will most likely love it too. Um, in ebook, I have started T.M. Fraser's Perversion. So I am, let me show you the cover for, no, not Audible, Amazon. <laughs> uh, Perversion. Should we get cover first, shall I? Perversion by T.M. Fraser, which um, I heard many things about. I heard many good things about it. Um, let me see if I can get the... Not you. I can read the blurb for you. That would be nice. Okay. Uh, love is supposed to be a fairy tale. Ours is a death wish. I'm the executioner for the Bedlam Brotherhood. She's a con artist working for my greatest enemy. I use her. She manipulates me. We find ourselves on opposite sides of a bloody war. My heart and head tell me I have to stay away. My lust for her doesn't give a shit. Nothing's fair in love and gang war. So I am about 17% in. And I'm quite enjoying it so far. Um, so yeah, so that's what I'm reading uh, right now. Um, oh, and on Audible, very excited and very encouraged because my last Jade West was not, not, Straight. just not, <laughs> my last Jade West was Call Me Daddy, which did not work for me, like, at all, but I am reading, I am now listening to Dirty Bad Wrong by Jade West. And that one, so far, um, I think I'm, how far am I into it? I think I'm, I'm, I'm almost done it. I think I've got like an hour or so uh, left. And I'm really, really enjoying it so far. It, it's, it's restoring my faith <laughs> in Jade West. Um, so, yeah, so C.D. Rice has become, become sort of a hit or miss for me. Uh, Jade West will see. So far, uh, Bait was amazing. Bait was one of my favorite books, I think, of 2000, did I read that in 2009? Yeah, because I remember my, my, my sis got sick and she's in the hospital for a while in February. Um, and I was, uh, remember reading that as I was uh, going to see her. Um, so my favorite of hers is has been Bait so far, Jade West. Oh my God, if you haven't read it, read it, oh my, read it, oh my God, oh my God. Um, and Dirty Bad Wrong is, is shaping up very, very nicely and I'm enjoying it. So that is gonna be it for this week's video blog. Um, follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash author ejamie. Like my Facebook page at facebook.com slash author ejamie, and I will talk to you guys next time.